knows how well they lasted and how long they were able to serve. The car is still in perfectly good working order, as I say, we can certainly on a decent road get her up to about 60, if we don't mind taking a while over the braking. The only thing we've done to improve it a little bit is just put on a stainless steel exhaust. It was getting through exhaust systems for fun. But apart from that, apart from spending a lot of money on having it overhauled, it is still in most excellent condition. The armour covers the bonnet, it covers the fighting compartment and the turret. There are two doors on the front and those doors protect the radiator. However, since you must have cool air going through the radiator, it doesn't um, leave the doors shut all the time, it will boil. So normally it's driven around with the doors open. The area at the back where you can see the troops sitting is not, however, armoured at all. There is a petrol tank there with armour around it, but the rest of it is all wood. It's wooden lockers the stowage and that sort of thing. So the armour is concentrated more towards the front end, which is what you'd expect. That's where the trouble's going to come from if you're doing things properly. So there you are, that is a genuine 1920 Rolls-Royce armoured car. There are only, as far as I'm aware, two originals, one half wreck and one that is arguably a replica in existence at the moment. So that is quite a rarity in its own right.